The safety of genetically modified crops and foods made from them has been a hot debate in recent months. No matter how you feel about this issue, it's likely that you're already eating genetically modified foods even without knowing it. The majority of the top three crops planted in the world, maize, cotton, and soybeans, are grown from genetically modified seeds. And according to the Grocery Manufacturers Association, 75 to 80 percent of all of the processed foods sold in the United States contain genetically modified ingredients. So are these foods more nutritious for consumers? And are they more efficient for farmers to grow, as their proponents claim? Or are they a threat to public health with side effects that we've yet to discover? Joining me now to offer their views on this, Jeffrey Smith, a food safety advocate. He's also the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. He's also the author of Genetic Roulette, the documented health risks of genetically engineered foods. And Ramez Nam, a computer scientist by training and author of three books that endorse the use of biotechnology to improve our quality of life. His latest book is The Infinite Resource, The Power of Ideas on a Finite Planet. Jeffrey, Ramez, uh, welcome to The Heat. Thank you both for joining us. Why don't I start with you in Seattle, Ramez, because um, you have a kind of a different take on this, and we want to go on the record right off the bat. You are not paid by Monsanto, but you feel pretty good about this stuff. I do indeed. I think genetically modified foods are a technology with a lot of promise. They've already brought benefits to the environment, and they can help us feed the planet. Uh, Jeffrey, you've got an entirely different take. Yes, the entire basis of genetic engineering was deception. The, the FDA scientists warned repeatedly that GMOs were dangerous and urged their superiors to require a long-term study. But the person in charge of policy at the FDA was the former attorney to biotech giant Monsanto, later Monsanto's vice president and chief lobbyist, now back at the FDA as the U.S. food safety czar. The policy the FDA came up with said no safety studies were necessary, no labeling was necessary, based on the lie that the agency wasn't aware of any differences to be worried about. Ramez? Well, Jeffrey has an interesting take on history and a lot of conspiracy theories, but the reality is that there have been 700 studies done on the safety of genetically modified foods all but a handful have found them safe, including more than 200 studies from independent sources. And every top scientific and medical body in the U.S. and in the world agrees that they're safe. The American Medical Association, the National Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society, the American College of Pediatrics, even the European Union's top science advisor agrees that these foods are safe for human consumption. That's the scientific consensus. Okay, Ramez is talking about science. Is this really, Jeffrey, a fear of this science or a fear of new innovation? Actually, there's far less than 700 safety studies done on GMOs. Nearly all the numbers of studies done on GMOs are commercial studies. Those that, that qualify as an academic safety study, particularly an animal feeding study, by four years ago, there was less than three dozen most of them done by industry themselves. And we've caught them red-handed being lying about their studies using tobacco science, rigging their research to avoid finding problems. But even so, when the American Academy of Environmental Medicine evaluated the animal feeding studies that had been done, they said there was such clear evidence of problems with gastrointestinal disorders, immune system problems, accelerated aging, organ damage, infertility, they said every doctor in America should prescribe non-GMO diets to every patient, and now thousands of doctors are doing just that and reporting dramatic improvements in their patients' health when they switch to non-GMO diets. Ramez, I see a smile on your face. You're not in agreement. Well, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine is a sham group. It's not recognized as a real specialty in America. Quack Watch, which is a site that looks for pseudoscience, lists them as a suspicious organization. Uh, the reality is that every one of the studies that Jeffrey cites in his self-published book has been refuted. Every one of those has been replicated in other places by other labs, many of them in academia, totally independently, often six or seven times with larger studies, and they all find that they can't find this health impact that Jeffrey is talking about. Even the European Union, which is very anti-GMO, they commissioned over 200 studies of GMO safety over the last decade, and their conclusion was that there's no health risk from GMOs. It's so clear, actually, that in France, the French Supreme Court overturned France's ban on genetically modified foods because it ruled in a very anti-GMO country it ruled that there was no evidence that the government of France had presented of any harm to humans or the environment whatsoever. So the ban had to go. 
That's how clear it is. Okay, I don't want to get bogged down on this, but I, Jeffrey, I saw you shaking your head. I want to give you a chance to respond, and then I want to move on. So, all right, let me let me describe some of the counter studies that Monsanto does in order to confuse. Years ago, scientists discovered that their Monsa that soy from Monsanto's genetically modified soy had 12 to 16 percent reduction in phytoestrogens. So Monsanto rushed the study to publication, saying there was so much statistical variation, we couldn't even do a analysis. It turns out they had instructed the laboratory to use an obsolete method of detection that was given up because it was prone to high variability. In other words, they designed the study to force the conclusion that there was no problem. And when their raw data is reanalyzed by proper independent scientists, where Monsanto says the rats have no problems, the peer-reviewed published studies by independent scientists on Monsanto's raw data show that there were signs of toxicity. And when they take those studies from 90 days and move them to two years, there's not just signs of toxicity. There's multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage, which Monsanto immediately released an a ocean of disinformation to try and protect its billion-dollar investment from these dangerous okay. foods. Uh, let's, let's move on a little bit, because I know <laughs> I, I, we could sit here. Well, this could go another 20 minutes, I know. And both of you would be back and forth. Let me, let me ask you this, Ramez. The biotech industry has spent millions defeating uh, ballot measures in the United States that would require products containing genetically modified ingredients from being labeled as such. You know that this is going on in Europe. You mentioned that they're kind of down on this. Why not, if, if there's nothing to worry about, why not let the buyer beware? If they don't want it and they see it, you know, why not let it be listed as such? Well, I think Monsanto is hurting themselves in this way, as are other food producers. Uh, the reality is that most consumers don't really care that much about GMOs, but they do think that they should be labeled. So there's not much scientific reason or any scientific reason to label these, but there's so much consumer demand that I think industry should just go ahead and put a label on there. But it matters what kind of label it is. We don't want a skull and crossbones because that would convey something that's just simply not true. But an ingredient label on the back that says may contain genetically modified foods, I think that's totally reasonable. And what we've seen is that doesn't really change consumer behavior anyway. I see. Well, you both probably agree with this because, Jeffrey, I'm sure you think the labeling should be there. Absolutely. In fact, when the doctors are prescribing non-GMO diets right now, they have to give out our shopping guide, nongmoshoppingguide.com, to help people become non-GMO eaters. It really shouldn't have to be up to us to put out a shopping guide. It should be on the label so people can make a choice. Jeffrey, what's the well, Jeffrey talks about. Go ahead. Remember. Jeffrey talks about these doctors. Jeffrey talks about these doctors prescribing GMO diets or non-GMO diets and seeing improvements, but there is no documentation of this whatsoever. This is pseudoscience. This is anecdote. There is no documented peer-reviewed evidence that has stood up to criticism from the rest of the scientific community that shows any benefits in this way whatsoever. The scientific I consensus have to say, on I the have safety to say of GMOs is as strong as the consensus on man-made climate change. That's what it's like. 99% of the studies show safety, and a very, very small fringe from a couple scientists, one in France that Jeffrey likes to talk about, who's been thoroughly discredited, shows some dangers. But those get all the press. This is not a balanced I, I, situation I have to at all. Say, this is simply not true. I speak to scientists all over the planet and have for 17 years. Now, I will say I there think is you great pick fear. them very carefully. I will say there are great fear among scientists from speaking out. Because, for example, when the Russian scientists discovered that when rats were fed genetically modified soy, more than half of their babies died within three weeks, she was told no more GMO research because of pressure on her director. When, and six uh, other labs tried to replicate that study and found that it wasn't no, true. No, actually, that is not true. Yes. There has not been a yes, single study. No, it is not true. Six. We look at all, no, it is, you can send it to me and you can show me that they did exactly the reputation, the replication with rats. No, they have been saying, they oh, did there's better. a study with that was. They did better with larger studies no, no. of more rats. They well, simply have not. They did better. Yet. Okay, let's Further, leave it there because I, I don't think you guys are going to agree on this one. <laughs> let, let me see. I, I can guarantee I, we're not going to agree on I, that. I, I want to get the golden moment, which is talking about golden rice, and I'll give you the first shot at this, Jeffrey. Tell us about golden rice and why should people be worried about it, or should they be worried about it? Okay, so the process of genetic engineering is fraught with unpredicted side effects. When you insert a gene and clone the cell into a plant, 2 to 4% of the DNA is different. Hundreds or thousands of mutations can exist within the genetically engineered crop. 
So in Monsanto's corn, there's a silent gene that is now active that produces an allergen called gamazine. In their soy, there's a, as much as a sevenfold increase in trypsin inhibitor, a known allergen. So you're taking a very, very side effect prone technology to simply boost vitamin A, but you can get red rice, which is a natural rice that has more vitamin A and it's not genetically engineered so it doesn't have these side effects. Or you can give a pill twice a year to a person who's at risk of blindness from vitamin A deficiency at a cost of 25 cents a year instead of spending $100 million on a technology which is extremely dangerous and has not been properly tested to evaluate its safety if impacts. All right, Ramez, you're going to get the last 45 seconds. Your thoughts? Five million kids don't have enough vitamin A in their diets around the world. A quarter million go blind each year, and most of those go on to die. Golden rice has been in testing for 15 years. It's a rice that has beta carotene, the same thing that makes carrots orange and gives you vitamin A. And if we can get people to grow it, where it's the most commonly eaten food in the world is rice, and help save hundreds of thousands of kids, by all means, we should do it. It would be madness not to. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thank you both for bringing the heat to the broadcast today. Certainly appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.